The Book of Romans, Chapter Fifteen. We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the uncircumcised to show God's truthfulness, in order to confirm that the promises given to the patriots, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles, and sing to your name. And again, it is said, "Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people." And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, "The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to root the Gentiles in him." While the Gentiles hope, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I myself am satisfied about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to instruct one another. But on some points, I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder, because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus. But then I have reason to be proud of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience, by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Elyricum. And I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ, and thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. But as it is written, those who have never been told of Him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. This is the reason why I have so often been hindered from coming to you, but now. Since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, and since I have longed for many years to come to you, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain, and to be helped on my journey there by you, once I have enjoyed your company for a while. At present, however, I am going to Jerusalem, bring aid to the saints, for Macedonia and Achaia. Have been pleased to make some contribution for the poor among the saints at Jerusalem, for they were pleased to do it, and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings, they ought also to be of service to them in material blessings. When therefore I have completed this and have delivered to them what has been collected, I will leave for Spain by way of you. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. I appeal to you, brothers, 
by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf, that I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's I will I will may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. May the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Chapter 16 I command to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church at Sancria, that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints, and help her in whatever she may need from you. For she has been a patron of many and myself as well. Greek uh, Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greek also the church in their house. Greek my beloved Epinetus, who was the first comfort to Christ in Asia. Greek Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greek Anjongonus and Julia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, they are well known to the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampelius, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Arbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is a proof in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Tryphena and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also his mother, who has been the mother to me as well. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas and the brothers who are with them. Greet Philogus, Julia, Nerissus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetite. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. So do Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen. I, Tortius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Ariatus, the city treasurer, and our brother Cortus greet you. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. The following is the English translation of Elder John Lee's message on the book of Romans chapter 15, translated by Lynn. Read the Bible every day so you will be full of faith. Romans chapter 15 verse 1 says, We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. 
we should aim to please our neighbors for their good to build them up. This ties in with what 1 Corinthians 12 talks about. In Romans 14, it says that if eating meat or drinking wine causes a brother to stumble, then we're destroying the work of God. So for the benefit of our brothers and to build them up, even though we know that eating meat and drinking wine is acceptable within limits, we're willing to lay down that right to avoid causing them to stumble, especially if they're weak in their faith. This aligns with what's being said here, that we who are spiritually mature, who have a greater understanding of God's truth, need to focus on something important. We shouldn't seek to please ourselves. Yes, all things are permissible to us, reasonable and moderate things we're free to do, but we shouldn't always prioritize our own pleasure. Instead, we ought to put the welfare of our weaker brothers and sisters first, building them up in their spiritual growth. We choose to set aside certain rights to help them grow spiritually. And by doing this, we're following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Paul points out that Christ didn't seek to please himself. He took on all of our sins. He bore our shame and endured every accusation on the cross for us. Christ wants us to empathize with others' weaknesses, to support and carry their burdens. This is something we should practice within the church, the loving family of our Heavenly Father. In the church, mutual acceptance is extremely important. Unity within God's house is essential. When the body is divided, the resulting spiritual damage can be expressed with mere words. So, Unity is fundamental within God's household, and one of the key aspects of unity is mutual acceptance. A crucial part of this is for those who are strong to bear the weaknesses of those who are not. There are various ways to carry one another's burdens. Galatians 6 talks about how we, who are spiritual, should restore those caught in sin, we're told to bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. Yes, when a brother is struggling with sin or going through tough situations, whether it's health issues, family problems, relational strains, or spiritual challenges, we should be there to pray for them, support them, and help carry that burden together. This way, we're fulfilling the law of Christ, which is to love others as ourselves. But verse 5 also tells us that each one should carry their own load. So while we're called to bear one another's burdens, we're also responsible for our own loads. For example, if someone is facing difficulties at work, they need to handle their responsibility there. If they're struggling with studies, they need to prepare and put in the work. They can certainly ask the church family, their brothers and sisters and pastors to pray for them, but they also need to pray themselves, draw near to God, and if necessary, repent personally. So we carry each other's burdens, but we must also carry our own loads, ensuring we don't rely solely on others' prayer without praying ourselves or ask others to bless our work while neglecting our own responsibilities. That wouldn't be right. So we need to find a balance here. However, I want to emphasize that bearing with one another's weaknesses, accepting each other is key. This includes bearing with faith-based weaknesses or even personality flaws, as long as it doesn't conflict with the fundamental truths, even on matters like interpretations of the millennium or the timing of Christ's return, whether pre-tribulation, post-tribulation, or mid-tribulation, we should accept one another. You can hold firm in your own convictions, but don't let these differences cause conflict, contempt, or need to correct others. In this area, we need to accept each other and make room for different perspectives. And then in verse 4, Paul says, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Especially Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, 
so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Here, Paul is saying our God is the God of hope and that the scriptures give us hope. Through believing in God's word and trusting in him, the Holy Spirit empowers us to have great hope. Now, it's essential to understand this hope isn't like the world's hope. Take the recent year during the pandemic, for instance. So many things changed and people were filled with uncertainty. People were saying things like, don't worry, things will get back to normal. All these challenges will pass and we'll go back to living exactly as we did before. But that's not the kind of hope we're talking about here. The hope Paul refers to is eternal, a hope from heaven that God prepared before the foundation of the world. It's the hope of glory, a hope that Jesus is preparing a glorious place for us. So when we share hope with our brothers and sisters, especially with people in the world, we need to remind each other that this hope isn't about worldly peace or financial blessing or just being able to live life as we please. It's not about just having life the way we want, coming and going as we wish. While those things aren't bad, but that's not the hope scripture talks about. Particularly in these end times, if we carefully study what scripture says about end times, we see that as we draw closer, the frequency and intensity of trials, disasters, and conflicts will increase much like a woman's labor pains. The great tribulation will be like birth pains, both more frequent and increasingly intense. So we shouldn't tell people, don't worry, everything will be perfectly fine. Instead, we should direct them to the eternal spiritual hope we have in heaven. Paul also speaks about his journey to the Gentiles, calling himself a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God. His goal was that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Every time I read these verses, I am reminded of Acts 10. We remember that when Peter was sharing the gospel with Cornelius and his household, even before he finished speaking, the Holy Spirit poured out on them. It's exactly like what Paul says here, the Holy Spirit made these Gentiles holy, setting them apart and making them acceptable to God. Peter's experience with Cornelius' household is a powerful reminder of this truth. Because of the blood of Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit, we, who were once far from God, separated from Christ, are now able to draw near. We've been cleansed by Christ's blood and set apart by the Holy Spirit, making us acceptable to God. Paul speaks about his dedication to preaching the gospel. Romans is like a letter he wrote during his third missionary journey, perhaps from the near Corinth, Throughout his three journeys, Paul spread the gospel through Asia Minor, Macedonia, and Achaia. You see his heart for evangelism. He never felt he's done enough. He didn't settle down. Instead, he saw new ground to cover. Since he's fully preached the gospel in those areas, he was now eager to go to Spain, longing to share the gospel where it hadn't been heard. That's the heart of an apostle never content to stay put, never complacent. As long as he could, he pressed forward, expanding God's kingdom. For years, he dreamed of going to Spain to extend God's kingdom and bring the gospel to new places. And on the way, he also hoped to visit the church in Rome. Back in chapter 1, Paul expressed his desire to come to Rome and share in the blessings of the gospel with them, hoping to reap some fruit among them. However, circumstances had kept him from visiting Rome. Right now, Paul needed to return to Jerusalem with a collection for the saints from Macedonia and Achaia. So he was headed to Jerusalem, hoping that after delivering this aid, he could make his way to Rome and then continue to Spain, bringing Christ's blessings with him. Paul also knew there would be oppositions from those in Judea, so he asked the believers in Rome to pray earnestly for him. He asked for prayers that the gifts he brought would be well received by the saints in Jerusalem and that he be delivered from those who oppose the gospel, especially the unbelieving Jews. He prayed that he might come to Rome with joy by God's will and enjoy fellowship with the church there. 
We know Paul did eventually make it to Rome, but perhaps not in the way he imagined. This is a lesson we often learn in our walk with God. Sometimes he grants our requests as we hoped, but his ways are higher and his plans are greater than ours. We read in Acts that Paul arrived in Rome as a prisoner, yet the gospel wasn't hindered by his chains. Paul preached from his rented house for two full years, and God's kingdom continued to advance. So even though Paul's arrival in Rome may not have been as he expected, God's work wasn't hindered. Instead, it flourished even more, and God's glory was revealed through it. Dear Bible Race viewers and families in Christ, thank you for watching our videos. We hope our sharing can enrich your life. If you find the content helpful, we hope you will support our ministry so we may continue to produce high quality videos to serve the kingdom of God and hope to bless more people's lives. You can donate in the following ways online giving by PayPal. If you are residing in Taiwan, you may also donate by bank transfer. Thanks again for your viewing and support. Every contribution is our greatest encouragement. We sincerely appreciate your support. May God bless you abundantly. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Dear families, we hope that you enjoy the Bible race as much as we do. If you are willing to volunteer to translate the original Chinese teaching into English or assist with video editing, please email service at 360sunrise.com. Thank you.